let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We remain standing as we sing verses 4 to 6 of our hymn.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, we have proclaimed, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises, that we may receive eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our readings. Our Old Testament reading for this morning is from Exodus chapter 19. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasure, treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people, and said before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning that we speak together responsibly is Psalm 100. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time we continue with our epistle lesson from Romans chapter 5. Paul writes this, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God chose his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. 
For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to the condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign, through righteousness leading to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time we invite our children forward for a children's message and object lesson.
First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You receive without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold, no gold or silver or copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff. For the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. And this is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our sermon hymn number 392.
You feel the gentle sea breeze on your face. You watch the clouds float by and you hear the melodic sound of those waves washing upon the shore. And all you can feel in that moment is one word, peace. You close the door and you wait for a few minutes. You hear some babbling and a little bit of fussing, but eventually all is quiet. And you hear just the simple, gentle lullabies playing in the background. Mom lies down on the couch, Dad sits in his easy chair, the children are asleep, and that means one word, peace. You look at your bank account, and it's a little less than what you had in it yesterday. But honestly, you're okay with that. Because after 30 years of payment after payment, that last one finally cleared, and your house is finally paid off. And that means one word, peace. Now when you think about each of these scenarios, they each bring peace in a different way, don't they? Uh, the warm sunny day in the ocean, uh, it's the peace that comes from a time of vacation, a time away from the daily routine, a time away uh, from the work that we go through, or even sometimes even just for a few days. Time away brings a sense of peace. Uh, the sleeping children, it's a time of peace uh, for mom and dad at the end of a busy day when you can put your feet up a little bit and just relax and wind down for the evening. A quiet time at the end of a full and busy day brings a sense of peace. The last mortgage payment, uh, it's the peace that comes from having this great financial burden in your life finally paid off. The house is now completely and officially yours, and that certainly brings a sense of peace. But peace in those moments didn't just happen, did it? Uh, to have those vacation moments of peace in Gulf Shores, Alabama, there was a lot of work that had to go in to get to that peace. All of the packing and all of the driving, finding a good place to rent for the week, and some good rest stops along the way there and back. Asking the neighbors to get the mail for you, checking the car to make sure that it's all good to make a long road trip, and more. There's a lot of work that has to be done to get to the peace of vacation. Uh, we think about the end of the day. Mom and Dad had to do a lot of work to get to those moments of peace. Chasing the kids and getting dinner ready. Chasing the kids and doing the dishes. Chasing the kids and, well, you get the point. <laughs> a long day of going back and forth, trying to do all kinds of different things just in normal life while also taking care of the kids. And so you have dinner, you play for a bit, but then comes the bedtime routine. Sometimes it goes smoothly, but other times it does not. There's a lot of work that has to be done to get to the peace of post-bedtime. To have those moments of peace at the end of a mortgage, your family had to do a lot of work, years of work, actually. You may have changed jobs or had jobs lost a time or two along the way. Years put in to help pay down that mortgage and to finally say it's yours. There's a lot of work that has to be done to get to financial peace. So that's how the world is, isn't it? All of this reaching, all of this striving for peace goes back to our first parents. Now that's what Paul says at least, uh, as we hear again these words from Romans 5 verse 12. Paul writes that sin came into the world through one man. That's Adam. And death reigned through that one man. Death through sin. And so death spread to all men because of all sin. Yes, we know it was Eve who reached for the fruit, but Adam was the one who was right there with her, giving approval to it. They believed the serpent, the devil, who said that they could get more peace, that they could have better peace if they reached up and knew good and evil more than something that God had already given to them. And it's the same thing for us today. The world says you can achieve peace through something. And it could be anything, right? The world tells you how you can achieve peace in any number of ways. Maybe it's peace for your health uh, if you take some sort of new supplement or a new, a new medicine. Or peace through health by, by exercising more or something like that. 
Maybe it's financial peace by following a specialized investment plan from some financial guru. Maybe it's the peace that comes from doing your best work on the project and feeling satisfied at the end of all of it at the end of all of it and seeing it succeed. Yes, the world offers all kinds of different forms of peace, but there are two problems with this vast array of peace that the world offers to us. Number one, the peace only comes after there's already a lot of hard work put into it. But number two, the peace that each of these brings is only temporary. The vacation at Gulf Shores, well, you blink and there you are back in the daily grind. The kids, they'll be up at six, and another day of patience and tact awaits in parenting. The mortgage, it may finally be paid off, but there's still going to be other bills and financial issues that come about later on. There's still going to be bills to pay. And so you can say the same thing about the supplements or the exercise, about your investment plan or the hard work that you put in on a project. The times peace that you get it ends up being shorter than you think it's going to be until the next thing comes up again. And all of this, my friends, is stuff that we have kind of a moderate degree of control over. So when you throw in things that you really can't control, uh, like a global pandemic, uh, or racial tensions across the country, or you name it, true peace seems like it's unattainable through this life. Unless peace isn't something that you work for to have only temporarily, but rather is something that's brought to you and that lasts. Jesus talks about this a little bit more in our Gospel lesson. In Matthew chapter 10, he speaks of people rejecting the peace that would be brought to them by his disciples. He says this, In whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it, and if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you, listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. So what is that peace that the disciples are bringing? Well, it's the gospel. It's Jesus Christ himself. But there are many people in this world that we know, of course, who do not receive the message of the gospel. It's brought to them, but they reject it. And in rejecting that, they reject Jesus. They reject true peace from the Prince of Peace. And the devil tempts all of us gathered together here this morning to do the same. Whenever we reach for all of those things that we've talked about, whenever we try to find peace through our achievements, uh, we may gain some peace for a little bit of time. But again, it doesn't last. It seems unattainable. But that's, my friends, not who you are now. You are not unworthy people, but worthy, and not because you're better than other people, but because you humbly receive the peace that God alone can bring. You see, the peace of God is different than what the world brings to us. The world says it's up to you to achieve peace, to get up here, and then when you get up here, you have to climb higher and higher. It's up to you to achieve peace through your own efforts, and in the end, all it does is satisfy each of us temporarily. Well, God says, I bring peace to you as a gift. Consider Paul's words from how God himself brings you peace. God says, I show my love for you, and that while you were still sinners, my son died for you, who took on the agony of all your sin, who took on the anxiety that it causes for you, who took on all of these things and stretched out his arms on the cross for you, whose blood ran red from his head, to his hands, down to his feet, and all of this, so that when he was raised from the dead and he took up new life, as he boldly proclaimed, peace be with you to his first disciples, that peace he also proclaims to you. Since therefore you have now been justified by his blood, much more shall you be saved by him from my wrath. For if while we were, enem we were enemies, you were reconciled to me by the death of my son, much more, that now that you are reconciled, shall you be saved by his life. 
Dear friends, the first verse of our text sums it up so nicely. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not peace through vacation, not peace through good work, not peace from financial or physical health. No, peace through Jesus Christ. But it's not just a one-time peace. It's an ongoing peace. It's peace that comes from the word we hear. As we prepared our hearts in the curia this morning, what did we pray? We prayed for peace. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. At the beginning of our sermon, what did we say? Grace, mercy, and peace be to you. It's the peace that comes from our baptism that reminds us that we are God's dearly loved children. Just as we sang, therefore I'll say again, God loves me dearly. God loves me dearly, loves even me. It's the peace that our Lord brings to us through prayer. As, as Paul writes in Philippians 4, 6-7, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Becoming a member of a congregation where we as believers get to care for each other today as we celebrate uh, Amanda today as she becomes a member of the Holy Cross. God works through this place to bring us peace. It doesn't mean it's always going to be perfect. Uh, that's why we bear with each other uh, in love week in uh, and week out. And finally, our Lord Jesus Christ gives us peace, his peace to speak to others. He gives us his peace that feeds us at his table, and then he gives us that peace to speak to others. As he himself said to his disciples, do not be anxious how you are to speak, or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your Father speaking through you. And so, dear friends, throughout our entire lives, Jesus brings his true and lasting peace to you and to each of us as we go and share it together and also with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your lives in this Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. At this time, please stand as you are able as we join together in confessing our common Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory.
And at this time, we invite Amanda to come forward for the acceptance of new members. No, no. Don't worry, it's not going to be a huge quiz.
Lord, we have so many blessings here in this place, uh, this place where we get to worship freely. Uh, we give you thanks for it. But Lord, our, our nation has had uh, many issues recently. Of course, we know about the pandemic, but also uh, the racial tensions and just tension in general. Uh, things have not uh, been going smoothly as of late. It's, there's often many times where that happens, but uh, Lord, it seems to be especially heightened right now. So we ask that you would bring a sense of unity and peace to our nation. And also that we, uh, as your people in the church, would show uh, and be examples of that love to other people. That we would show love and care for all of our neighbors uh, each and every day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And Lord, we ask that you would especially be with all those who are in our prayer guide, who are sick, uh, and also those who we name silently in our hearts at this time. that you would continue to bring your peace and your strength as well as healing according to your will. We ask also that you would especially be with Jeff as he's had some complications following his surgery and complications with the medication that he's been on. Help the doctors and nurses who have been attending to him uh, that things would be able to get straightened out so that he can be feeling better uh, back to good health as quickly as possible. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. And finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you.
your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we celebrate the ongoing peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we hear these words, The peace of the Lord be with you always.
seeing the post communion candle.